Next is Inspired Contracting with William Randolph. Hello, my name is William Randolph, and I really appreciate the opportunity to join you during Impact Week. I am a retired federal government acquisition executive and a guest lecturer at the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. I really appreciate this opportunity. So today, I want to talk about a concept that is that you're likely hearing a lot about, the concept of innovation. But I want to talk to it about I want to talk about it from a different perspective, from a standpoint of what fuels innovation. And the thing, in my opinion, that fuels innovation is inspiration. Therefore, innovation requires inspiration. So let's talk about what is innovation? Okay, the dictionary describes it as an action or process of innovating, okay, the action verb, innovating. Okay, so Right off the bat, that definition says a couple things. One, it says it's a process, okay? It's not an outcome in and of itself, okay? It's a way of being. It's an action. Therefore, innovation, in my opinion, is mindset. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of showing up, okay? And that the innovations are the results, okay, are the results. I recall hearing early on, and I've heard this quote quite a few times, that says that necessity is the mother of invention. And I actually believe that to be true. When you think about it and you look around at all of the things that have been created on this planet, most of them were based on a necessity, a need. Someone wanted something, and therefore it was the catalyst, the fuel for the invention. I believe the same thing applies to innovation, that inspiration is the father of innovation, okay? I believe that to be true, that it, takes, it absolutely takes inspiration in order for, for an innovative strategy, concept, product, and outcome to be delivered. It requires inspiration. Inspiration is really nothing more than capturing the hearts and minds of people, okay? Now, there is a formal definition, and the formal definition talks about the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, okay? To do action or feel something, especially to do in a creative environment, okay? That is inspiration. Hearts and minds. <clears throat> now, that's no small feat. Capturing hearts and minds, it's absolutely no small feat. But when it is done effectively, it can achieve extraordinary results time and time and time again. When I think about innovation <clears throat> and the need for inspiration, to be a part of it, to be the fuel, I always think there's some big questions that need to be asked first. Okay. There's a couple, primarily around whether the organization is ready to be innovative, to be innovative and to receive the innovations, whatever the outcomes are. Here are a couple of questions that I think that the organization should be pondering as we go forward. Is the culture, is the culture really ready to invest, to embrace and invest in the innovative activity? Okay. Is the culture, are the people, are, is the organization ready? Okay. Has the work been done to prepare them to think about innovative activity? Okay. Number two, <clears throat> are the incentives and the motivations aligned to the desired outcome, okay? Has the work been done in the organization to create the environment of incentives and motivations, the things that will drive the inspiration and the innovation, are those things, have those incentives and motivations 
been aligned toward the desired outcome. Number three, what's the big why? What, what are we doing this for? What, what's the motivation behind it? Okay. What, what's the big why? Is this just innovation for innovation's sake? Just because we can talk about it, maybe write a few blog posts. Okay. Is it, what are we really driving? What's driving the need for the innovation? We really need to understand, in my opinion, the big why. Number four, what are the true desired outcomes? If we believe innovation is not a thing in and of itself, it's a way of being, it's a mode of operation, it's a mindset, then what are the real desired outcomes for this innovative activity that we're seeking to deploy? That's a question that really needs to be examined in terms of capturing hearts and minds. The big why. Number five, usually there is clear focus on the innovations. Okay. It's just like we know what we have a sense of what we want to do. However, is there a clear focus of the innovations? Okay. What are the what are the innovations going to be applied to? Okay. So the focus of the innovations instead of on the innovations. It's very, very important and very critical for that activity to occur. Number six, has the mindset work been done to effectively foster the innovations? Okay. Have you done the training? Have you done the development? Have you done the coaching? Have you done the vision work? Okay, the vision work that will entice people to come along with you. That activity needs to be done. And then last, but certainly not least, number seven. Can the resulting innovations live in the environment in which they were birthed? Okay. No matter what you're creating, whether it's a new writing instrument, a new software tool, a new warfighter capability, can those innovations effectively live in the environment in which they were created? That's a big challenge, okay? In terms of we can do all this grandiose thinking and designing and creating and ideating, okay? Creating new ideas and iterating on those ideas. But if the thing that is created can't effectively live in the environment in which it was created, then I'm not sure that the innovations are actually worth it, worth the time, the effort, the energy, the drive, the creativity to build them. So if an organization, a team, a department can answer these questions, and it's really all of them surround around the big why and have we done the homework to land the big why, that the big why can move hearts and minds. If you've done that homework, then the next level is about the individuals. The focus can shift to us as the subject matter experts, as the professionals, as those capable of harnessing the processes and the ingenuity and the creativity and the mindset of innovation to create and unlock lasting value for our organizations. Okay. That's the goal. Okay. That is the goal. So once the organizational work has been done, now let's shine the spotlight on us. When I think about that in terms of our subject matter experts, those that will be spinning straw into gold on a routine basis. When I think about them, in my opinion, there are an additional seven things that we should be thinking about. Okay, number one, embrace the pressure. Whatever the pressure is, whether it's institutional, whether it's organizational, whether it's leadership, whether it's driving outside pressures or forces, whatever those forces are, 
embrace the pressure. Those are real. That is where the energy and the fuel come from, that there's a burning platform somewhere that we must embrace. Okay. Number two, live in honesty and integrity. No matter what, show up in an honest and integrity-based way. That is the foundation of all business, all contracts, organizational dynamics. Okay, It is honesty and integrity. Honesty and integrity. And it should be the focus of all human interaction. But when we show up ready to innovate, ready to deploy our energy, and we must be we must have a level set understanding of what honesty and integrity is, and that all of the players are showing up in that fashion. Okay, number three, we should operate in empathy. Okay, understanding. Empathy is just another word for understanding. I understand your needs, okay? And showing up and I can appreciate, not only understand, but I can appreciate your needs. Therefore, when I deliver value, I'm going to deliver it in support of, in advancement of your needs. Showing up with empathy, in my opinion, is critical to success and critical, critical to capturing hearts and minds of individuals. Number four, we must honor the craft. Okay? My craft is acquisition, specifically contracts. Okay? But whatever the craft is and whatever crafts are necessary to deliver value and to deliver excellence in an innovative manner, okay, we must honor the craft. Okay. Do the things that are necessary to show up as a professional okay. and deliver value and unlock value as a professional. Be solutions oriented. Okay. Be yes, design strategies to get to versions of yes. Okay. Positive versions of yes that advance the ball, advance the needs, advance the requirements in support of mission. Number five, in order to honor the craft and in whatever craft you're in, you have to learn the rules in order to bend them right. Okay. Innovation, the mindset of innovation requires us to show up a little differently, to test previous assumptions, okay. to question previous guidance, and to challenge previous modes of operations. In order to do that effectively though, you must learn the rules in order to bend them right. This is of critical importance. Okay. Knowing where the, where the rules are soft and are malleable, okay? And then know those ones that are like a brick wall that you, you, you're, there's a waste of time and effort to deploy activity against those rules. So learn the rules in order to effectively bend them right. Number six, focus on the outcomes. Be outcomes oriented, okay? Now have an outcomes oriented focus. What are we trying to accomplish? And all activity, all creativity, all innovation, all mindset work, and then all execution is in support of focusing on the outcomes. In my opinion, that is sometimes where we lose it. We start doing innovation for innovation's sake. Think about focusing on the outcome. In the end, what are we actually trying to accomplish? Okay. Number seven, row the boat. 
when it's all said and done, do the work to advance the cause. Whatever the cause is, get in the boat and row. Okay. Now, there are a lot of things. When you think about getting in the boat and being a contributor, okay, there's a lot of things that are necessary for that to occur. One, you have to be in the boat. Okay. So that's, you, you're all in, you're committed. Okay. You're willing to step into the boat. Okay. However, that's not enough because I have seen situations in the symbolic being in the boat, some symbolic of being in the boat. And instead of having an oar and paddling, someone's in the back drilling holes in the bottom. You have to not only row the boat or be in the boat, but you have to row the boat. Rowing the boat requires a couple of things. It requires preparation. It, it requires commitment. <clears throat> and it also requires know-how. Do you know how to do it? Okay. Do you know how to do it? And then the last thing it requires is commitment. Are you willing to do the things that are necessary to deliver value, to move the boat? So row the boat. Those are the seven. Embrace the pressure. <clears throat> live in honesty and integrity, operate in empathy, honor the craft, learn the rules in order to bend them right, focus on outcomes, hold the outcomes, and last, row the boat, do the activity, commit to row the boat. Folks, this is a concept <clears throat> that suggests that innovation is not an outcome in and of itself. Inspiration is. And once the inspiration occurs, innovation is almost a byproduct. You almost can't not have it. Okay. Focus on the inspiration. Capture hearts and minds. Give a compelling vision of the future, of what the organization, what the activity, what the energy, the, what the deployed energy and creativity could be. Paint the vision. I believe in our acquisition community, people follow compelling visions. <clears throat> you have to compete, you have to paint compelling visions for people, for individuals, for professionals, for subject matter experts of a version of tomorrow that is far better than the version that they're in today. When doing that, one can deliver value, one can unlock creativity, and advance the ball far greater than any other, in my opinion, mode of operation. Focus on the inspiration. Empower your people. Okay? Give them the latitude to be innovative, okay? To be innovative. Clear the path. I always believe as leaders, we have two responsibilities, to be head cheerleader and then to be chief roadblock remover. When we're, in, when we're inspiring our teams, think about head cheerleader and chief roadblock remover. Those are the ways we develop and increase the likelihood of innovation. It is through inspiration. Thank you so very much for this time. This one is near and dear to me. I see a lot of innovation, a lot of innovative activity occurring. 
and I am hopeful that it is focused and that is being fueled by inspiration that leaders and teams and organizations and agencies and departments are doing the work to capture hearts and minds so that when it is time to deliver value and to unlock innovation, that they've got the hearts and minds and your subject matter experts and your professionals will give and give and give, will dig deep to be able to unlock value in an innovative manner. My name is William Randolph. And again, I am a guest lecturer at the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. Thank you so very much for this opportunity and enjoy your impact week. And I hope to one day see you in person. All the best, be well.